Directed by Martin Scorsese and written by Paul Schrader, Taxi Driver is a psychological thriller and horror. The plot tells the story of Travis Bickle, played by Robert De Niro, a deranged loner and Vietnam veteran with insomnia who moves to New York and becomes a taxi driver, as the name would suggest. When he's not working the graveyard shift as a taxi driver, he spends his days watching porn at CD cinemas. However, all changes when he meets Betsy, played by Civil Shepherd, the one pure soul in all of New York to Travis and a volunteer to Senator Charles Palantine's presidential campaign. He becomes obsessed with her, but drives her away after a date to the local porn cinema. Feeling thoroughly rejected from the world, he finds Iris, played by Jodie Foster, a 12-year-old runaway and prostitute fleeing from her pimp, Sport, played by Harvey Keitel. Travis becomes determined to save Iris from the cesspool of New York, mailing her enough money to send her back home to her parents, and he prepares to assassinate Palantine. However, he is thwarted by Palantine's security and runs away only to divert his hate for the world to the brothel, killing Iris's pimp, the doorman, and a customer. The plot jumps ahead a year or so. Travis is named a hero by the newspaper, and Iris's parents' letter to Travis is read over a montage of cut-out newspaper articles about Travis on what can only be presumed as the wall of his apartment. One night, he finds himself driving Betsy home and says goodbye, driving off into dark, lonely streets. But let's backtrack a little. Taxi Driver is as much about personal self-inflicted isolation as it is about social and political isolation, all leading to a paranoid perspective of the world. Being a veteran of a socially and politically unpopular war, Travis feels rejected by society and despises Palantine because he stands for everything Travis cannot have, real genuine connection to his humanity. The sequence I have chosen is the very first in the plot. It opens with Travis walking into the taxi manager's office with smoke trailing behind him as if exiting his own personal hell. Here we get our first look at Travis with loud, frightening music as if we are being introduced to the monster rather than the protagonist. Mise-en-scene is a combination of setting, lighting, costume, and staging that goes into every single shot. In this instance, deep staging allows us to see Travis's real focus, which is the argument in the background between Wizard, played by Peter Boyle, and another cabbie. Travis cannot help but allow his paranoia to isolate that conflict as it is isolated through the frame. Also visible is Travis's Vietnam badge on the left side of his jacket. How do you answer that? Even with another person in the frame, their back is turned to Travis, and he is again isolated. In this next scene, we learn about Travis's insomnia and his behavior to drive around late at night. So what do you want to hack for, Bickle? I can't sleep nights. There's porn out there just for that. Yeah, I know, I tried that. So what do you do now? You know, ride around nights, mostly, subways. Buses. I figure, you know, if I'm going to do that, I might as well get paid for it. Notice how, even with a new camera height, the argument in the background is still visible. Travis's paranoia is inescapable. Want to wake up town tonight? South Bronx? Harlem? I'll work anytime, anywhere. Anytime, anywhere. This line is immensely important. Travis can work wherever he wants, and yet he chooses to operate in the slums of the city where he fuels his disgust for humanity and for his inability to connect with it. We work Jewish holidays? Anytime, anywhere. Notice the quick uh, glance of the business. argument in the background when referring to his conscience. How's your driving record? It's clean. It's real clean, like my conscience. Are you gonna break my chops? You don't trouble with guys like you come in and break my chops all the time. If you're gonna break my chops, you can take it on the arches right now, you understand? Here we see Travis frame for the first time with another character. However, it is also the first time we see Travis in conflict. Sorry, sir. Notice how the movement of the camera reacts with Travis, confining him into a claustrophobic close-up as his paranoia rises. Physical. Clean. Age. 26. Education. You know, some. I'd... Here, there, you know. Hey, hey. 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 
Military record. Uh, honorable discharge, May 1973. Were you in the Army? Marines. I was in the Marines, too. So what is Here we see the first real connection the between next Travis job. and another character. However, as the camera cranes up, the argument in the background only becomes more prominent. Travis is choosing to see the negative in every situation. Are you moonlighting? And when the camera turns back at him, he is well, still I, in the claustrophobic close up. What's moonlighting? Look, uh, just fill out these forms and check back tomorrow when the ship breaks. Before leaving the manager's office, he takes one last glance at the argument in the background. All right, please step up. Take the car out through 50 HP, please. Because it's crowded on 57. The last shot of the sequence is a long shot of Travis walking up a shaded sidewalk with pedestrians walking the opposite direction. Typically used as a lapse in time, a dissolve only brings Travis closer to the camera, suggesting that the film and Travis aren't quite in sync, and that Travis isn't in tune with the world. Travis Pickles alone in the world because the world made him be. He inflicts his loneliness and isolation upon himself to deal with being rejected, forever driving on a dark city street.